work on this. We might put the cul-de-sac in first, maybe. Then work on our trees. Hmm. No, it shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to start by placing in the spruce trees. And while the spruce trees are generating in, then I'll start working on that cul-de-sac. It'll give uh, spruce trees enough time to generate in. Now there's no way I can put in the trees the same way they are in Project Zone Void. Even with adjusting one block from Minecraft, from Project Zomboy to a 4x4 in um, Minecraft, the trees are too, too close together. And the way that trees are generated into Minecraft, it makes it a little bit harder to pull it off. So I'm just trying to get a general feel of how it looks in Project Zomboid. And for this I'm just basically going off on one by eye as to where the tree should be. And there are really two ways you can put in trees in Minecraft. One of them is to use saplings. And I'm using saplings in this case to give it more of a random feel to it since I don't know what type of tree will be generated. Well, type of tree within the, gener within the type of saplings. The spruce trees tend to look similar to one another. They, the only difference in, me, in those is the leaves and how tall the tree is. The birch trees are pretty much the same way, although birch trees do tend to be a bit smaller than the other trees. The oak trees are the real wild cards in that it, there's a, quite a few different trees that can be generated in with an oak sapling and oak trees can have um, side branches coming out of it as a not just so it's not just the trunk of the tree you have to consider it's also the side branches and those side branches do become an issue when you're putting oak trees close by to other structures or other buildings that you've been working on Since oak trees and really trees in general can displace blocks that are above it. They automatically displace air blocks. So that's not a problem. They can displace uh, dirt blocks. So in other words, if you place a sapling underneath a dirt block, it can still generate. It may not always generate, but it can. And it will destroy that um, dirt block above it. The ones that it can't generate in and or displace it are tend to be the um, stone blocks.
There's quite a few open fields in this area, so I'm trying to balance out exactly where these trees are going in. And there is also one more issue involved, and that is with a pond. And basically what I'm trying to do now is to figure out exactly where this pond is going to be. in relation to other things that I have built. Okay. And these are just temporary to make sure that I've got everything lined up. Especially since some of the things I'm lining this pond up with are out of drawing view. And what I'm using now is that there's a thin, and it's barely visible, unless you know what to look for, but there's a thin highlight around the block that you can manipulate. You can see it a little bit more on flat areas, but you can see, for example, you can manipulate that block. And you can see it better among like blocks such as right here you can see the thin black line between the um, the dirt blocks that I just placed down and so there is a sort of pond right here. It's a regular shaped pond. And I'm going to sh um, create it through subtraction by removing the dirt involved. Where it will be. And once I've got the frame out, uh, then I'll clear out the grass blocks between it. Oh, 
one, two, three, four, no, that does that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, five, six. Two, three, four. Two, and two. Two. This is a bit complicated, but it adding in this pawn brings a lot more to the actual build, and it keeps it closer to the Project Zomboid build, which is the whole point of this. And that is to keep it as each of these sections as close as possible, although they're not going to be identical. One option would have been just to place in the pond, however. But as I said, it, the whole point is to get as much accuracy as possible.
so this pond excavation will take a short while. And we'll also include a couple of layers. Some parts are not shown in Project Zomboid at all. In Project Zomboid, the game itself is pretty flat. So... You can see where the water is. But it doesn't tell you how deep the water is in any, any given part of the game. So that's left up to me to basically carve out the depth of the the pool, how it, or in this case the pond, how it makes sense. And how I'll do that is I'll just make a secondary pond inside this pond, following the contours of it, roughly. And that will be one level down. And depending on how that looks, I may go three levels down. So the pond may at some parts be just a meter deep. In some parts it'll be two meters deep and potentially up to three meters deep in the middle.
And so now I'm just basically trying to follow the contours of this to place in the next part of it. Or pond within the pond at the moment. And this one doesn't need to be exact. This needs to be a rough one. And I'm just going to do this before I put any water in it. It makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, for the last part, I'm just going to make a small section, uh, three meters deep. And that should be enough. That right in the center of it. And now to fill it in with water. And water itself has come a long way, so all I need to do with with this is to just fill out the outer edge of it, the outline of it. And the water will automatically fill in to the center areas. In the earlier builds and sometimes in the PC version you could end up with a worse situation where it would have gone all the way up to this step down and you would end up having to use ice blocks in this middle or use other methods but fortunately that's not really a problem anymore And this grass block underneath the water or in the water 
will eventually die out and be replaced by dirt. And then you can see this already happening uh, right on some of these areas along the edges. It's particularly right here. takes care of one of the ponds and there there's several other ponds in a few areas and this is also placing this in to help place out the tree line as well since it gives me a reference as to where the trees should be First, I need to outline this with a dirt path. Now, I'm using this rather than just a dirt block but simply because this dirt path won't grow over with or won't change into uh, grass over time. The conditions are right if, for example, you break a block and end up with dirt underneath it, it will turn to grass. Or if you place down a, a dirt block, eventually it will turn into grass. In some areas it will turn to grass faster than others.
Then I'm basically doing a flyover to make sure I've got all the water in correctly. And there's not any um, sections where uh, I need to place more water. And I'm trying to run this sort of parallel to the road.
For the tree lines, I'll just do the spruce trees. For the trees by the houses, I'll put in the birch trees and the oak trees as well. The tree line around the open fields will give a good enough generalized view of how it should look. And I'll also do a short flyover the next time I stream over over what I've built there off stream. And some of it I'm going to work on off stream anyway. And that is a lot of the forest areas. Placing birch trees in first since oak trees don't tend to have too much of a problem being placed wherever. And most of the reason I'm putting in these trees is uh, that it's not all one tree and the birch trees provide a pretty good contrast between the other two trees, the spruce trees and the oak trees. The oak trees sort of do to a degree, but you can really see the difference when you see a spruce tree right next to an oak tr a birch tree, I should say. And in this, the birch trees are have a very white uh, bark with um, black, grayish black spots on them, so it really stands out. Of these three, these spruce trees have the darkest wood, or the oak, well, bark I should say.
with oak trees being slightly less as dark, sort of more brown. Once I've uh, helped these trees grow in, I'm going to do one more line of spruce, then I'll do the flyover I was talking about. One thing to keep in mind when placing trees in is that later trees will displace the leaves of previous trees. So as a new tree is generated in, it basically displaces whatever's above it that it can displace so that is so if you place in a spruce tree first and then place a oak tree beside it then the oak leaves that are generated in will displace whatever spruce leaves that it generates on top of
So now I'm just filling in areas where grass is higher. And that's a line of spruce trees that will signify the edge of this open field. It's a pretty large field. So now I'll do the flyover of what I've worked on today. And I might extend the trees out just a little bit more, but this gives a good idea of how it should look. First I started off with this single story house. And this two-story house, both of them sharing the same driveway. This two-story house also had a garage. Not attached to it, just off to the side. And also this two-story house here, surrounded by a fence. And this is the tutorial house from the Project Zomboid game. And then finally this single story house over here. Okay, so where I'm going to be working then the next time I stream Project Zomboid will be along these two cul-de-sacs right here. And each of these two cul-de-sacs have four houses each. Some of them quite a bit bigger than others. There's four single story houses along this cul-de-sac. And this one, this next one, has four houses. Two of them are two-story houses, and two of them are st two of them are single-story houses. Once those cul-de-sacs are done, it's eight houses total there. Then there are two single-story houses along the right side of this road as it takes a left turn and then a right turn. And then one final single story house behind some higher fence right here. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 more houses to go in Muldrog. And then I'll begin working along the various buildings along the outside of Muldrog. And also, also, as I put in those houses, it makes it easier to put in the various forest and tree lines involved there. So that is it for today and thank you very much for watching.